All right, let's go ahead and talk about the inverse cosecant function. So uh, here's the graph of the cosecant function, and we see that this graph does fail the horizontal line test. Because, for example, if we draw a horizontal line up here, it's going to hit this graph in one, two, three, four, five, six points that we could see, and actually infinitely many more out this way, and infinitely many more out that way. Okay, so also uh, there are vertical asymptotes here uh, that we excluded from the graph just to uh, keep things from getting too cluttered, but we will get back to the asymptotes a little bit later. Uh, in this video. So anyway, um, since this does fail the horizontal line test, we cannot uh, get an inverse for it. But what we can do, just like we've been doing, is uh, restrict the domain uh, of this function here. So let's go ahead and restrict this uh, like so. So if we restrict this to be between uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, uh, except for x equals 0, because at x equals 0, there's actually a vertical asymptote right there. Okay, but here from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, uh, we see that this graph does um, pass the horizontal line test, because any horizontal line that we draw up here or down here hits the graph once. Okay? And any horizontal line in between these two pieces doesn't touch the graph at all. That's great. Um, so that means this passes the horizontal line test. We're all good to go uh, to get our inverse. So, um, also do want to point out that this graph goes infinitely far up and infinitely far down, but it does stop here at uh, negative pi over 2, comma negative 1, and it stops over here at positive pi over 2, comma positive 1. Okay, but it goes infinitely far up here and infinitely far down here, and there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Okay, now uh, to get the graph of the inverse function, we take this graph, which we can use now because it passes the horizontal line test, we can use this and reflect it over the line y equals x. Okay, and when we reflect this over the line y equals x, uh, we're going to get the graph of the inverse function. So reflect this and this over the line y equals x, and we're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. So reflect this piece over y equals x, we get this piece right here. Reflect this piece of the restricted cosecant function, and we're going to get this piece here of the inverse cosecant function. So uh, this piece and this piece, that's our inverse cosecant function. Let's look at them by themselves. So that here is our inverse cosecant function. Okay? So it goes infinitely far to the left and infinitely far to the right, and it stops here at negative 1, comma, negative pi over 2, and positive 1, comma, positive pi over 2. Okay? Uh, now, what about the asymptotes? So let's go back up here to the beginning. So um, when we restrict our domain, we still have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. Okay? Now, when we take that vertical asymptote x equals 0, uh, we're, going to, we're going to take it and we're going to reflect it over y equals x. Now when you reflect a vertical line over y equals x, it becomes a horizontal line. So the vertical line x equals 0, when we reflect it over y equals x, it becomes the horizontal line y equals 0. So our vertical asymptote x equals 0 uh, for the restricted cosecant function actually becomes the horizontal asymptote y equals 0 for the inverse cosecant function. Okay, so here's the cosecant function by itself. Here's the cosecant function with the horizontal asymptote. So piece of the cosecant function, or sorry, piece of the inverse cosecant function, piece of the inverse cosecant function, horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. And again, the graph goes infinitely far to the left and infinitely far to the right, and it stops at negative 1, comma, negative pi over 2, and positive 1, comma, positive pi over 2. Okay, so negative pi over 2 is the smallest number in the range, positive pi over 2 is the largest number in the range, and in the range we have everything in between except for 0, because that's where our horizontal asymptote is. Okay, so that's it for the graph. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of the properties and see how this relates to the uh, cosecant function. Okay, so the domain and the range we just saw from the graph, the domain is uh, same thing as the domain of the inverse secant function, actually. Uh, it's negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. Okay, we see that in the graph here, actually. Uh, negative infinity all the way up to negative 1 okay, for the values of x, and then start up again at x equals 1 and go all the way out to infinity. Okay. So that's the uh, domain and the range we already talked about, uh, negative pi over 2 all the way up to pi over 2, including both, but not including 0. So negative pi over 2, square bracket, and then comma 0, round parentheses, union 0, round parentheses, all the way up to pi over 2, square bracket. Okay. So that's what we have going on there. Um, so that's the domain and range. A little bit more complicated than uh, most of the others. It's about the same level of complicated as uh, the inverse secant function. Okay, so a little more complicated than the other four, though. Uh, anyway, notation, inverse cosecant of x uh, with that negative 1 in the exponent. 
Or we could say arc cosecant of x, I guess, I'm not sure how we pronounce that uh, any other way, arc cosecant of x, or uh, a cosecant of x for short, so that a is just short for the arc. Um, and it's not quite as common as it used to be, but people will know what you mean, it just depends on where you are. Um, but anyway, three different ways of saying exactly the same thing, it's just the inverse cosecant function. So three different ways of talking about the inverse cosecant of x. Some cancellation properties. Uh, cosecant inverse of the cosecant of x equals x if x is uh, between negative pi over 2 and 0 like this uh, so negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 0 or 0 is less than x strictly less than x uh, less than or equal to pi over 2 so basically if x is in uh, this interval here or this interval here if it's in somewhere in this union then we can we have this cancellation property here okay. What if x is not in this interval or this interval, then what do we do? Well, as long as there's no domain violation, there's something else that we can do to evaluate the left side here. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will talk about that in a later video. Um, but for now, just uh, we have this property here. This We can cancel as long as x is uh, in this interval here or this interval here. So negative pi over 2 less than or equal to x less than 0, or 0 less than x less than or equal to pi over 2. Similarly, uh, cosecant of the inverse cosecant of x equals x if x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to positive 1. So basically, as long as x is in the domain of the inverse cosecant function, uh, we have that cancellation property here. Okay. What if x is between negative 1 and 1? Okay. What if x is, for example, 0? Well, then, uh, if x is not uh, less than or equal to negative 1 and if x is not greater than or equal to positive 1, then actually what that means is that x is not in the domain of the inverse cosecant function. And if x is not in the domain of the inverse cosecant function, then it doesn't even make sense to say this. So this is, in that case, we would have no solution or it just doesn't exist, um, something like that. So if x is not uh, less than or equal to negative 1, and if x is not greater than or equal to 1, then uh, this we cannot do the left side at all. We cannot evaluate that. Okay? But if as long as x is less than or equal to negative 1 or greater than or equal to positive 1, we have this nice cancellation property here, so that's great. That's pretty much it for inverse cosecant. Uh, just some quick notes about the notation, um, just like we've been doing. So here, this negative 1 in the exponent, we want to be careful because it does not mean the same thing it usually means for algebraic expressions. So usually that negative 1 in the exponent means do something like this with a reciprocal, but for trig functions it doesn't really mean that. Cosecant inverse of x is not equal to 1 over cosecant of x. Okay, 1 over cosecant of x is actually the sine of x, and the sine of x is not the same thing as the inverse cosecant of x. Okay, this notation just comes from the fact that if you have a function f of x, the inverse function is denoted uh, with this negative 1 of the exponent f inverse of x. So cosecant function, the inverse, is cosecant inverse of x, negative 1 of the exponent. Okay? So that's what's going on there. Uh, that's pretty much it for the inverse cosecant function. So some properties coming up in the next uh, video, followed by some uh, examples of evaluating uh, inverse trig functions.